Good evening, everyone. My name is Angelica, but most people call me Jelly, and I'm, he and I'm here to talk about my addiction to story. Now, when I say I'm addicted to story, I don't mean I'm just addicted to um, the um, reading or like, uh, or just playing video games or stuff like that. I'm addicted to the way that a story can pull you in and never let you go, where you come out blinking, dazed and confused, hours later, um, whether it be a movie or your favorite book or a video game, where hours are spent and it's just you were lost inside with the characters and the creation and the overall world where you don't want to escape. That's where my addiction comes from. Uh, and that's where it's always going to go. Uh, so I am a mix of the DNA of my ancestors, the sky, the sea, a few things in between, and all the different stories that have helped shape me and the way that I communicate and the way that I am. It's been like this since I was young. During family events, I would go off and sneaking into a corner and I would go and draw on my notebook or write or do whatever it is that I decided to do instead of hanging out with my cousins. And usually it took forms of wanting to create stories, whether it be about the Powerpuff Girls or characters and worlds I created in my own head. It was always just a few books and it was always, uh, I would always bring an extra book just in case I was finishing another book just a few chapters away. And it's still the same way today. Just a few books, just a few books to add to my suitcase overseas. Just a few books so I can go uh, on the train ride to New York City. And I'm still enraptured with stories today and love to immerse myself in all forms of media, including Toy Story. Stories are not just an escape from the good times. They're also a way to help me and I know others cope with things that are going on in reality that they would love to escape from. Uh, I've been in a lot of dark places, as we all have been, and I um, was, in, uh, was losing ground and losing focus. I was becoming untethered from my reality. When I was a senior in high school and my parents divorced, I moved back to my hometown where I really didn't keep connections with a lot of my old peers, and I was recovering from an autoimmune deficiency. So I was really feeling lost and unsure, especially with college coming. But then I found stories again, and the ideas started flowing back, and the connections started happening. That book was actually um, Tides by Betsy Cornwell, who was my mentor for my thesis. And I, I'm really grateful to have that connection with her and with her story, because Tides has th themes of family, of um, personal image, and of course, the idea of the Isles of Shoals in New Hampshire being mixed with the fantasy lore of Selkies. And it just sort of brought me back to realizing that the real um, reality is um, what I make of it, but I'll always have those stories to escape to. They've always been my saving grace, regardless of the media. And that's what I wanted to capture in my thesis when Thavma came for Nix. It is an illustrated novel. Um, where it tells the story of Nyx, a young woman who, uh, with her grandfather, created the series Potential Energy when she, was, when she was sick and in the hospital. They created a world together where Nyx could escape to and find solace in. They created the world of Thavma, where, um, where the skies and the seas meet in between, where the stars fall down to kiss the seas and the seas rise up in order to embrace the skies. Uh, with space pirates, and astral mermaids that turn into black holes, everything that Nix could think of, they turned it into the Potential Energy Saga, which became a worldwide phenomenon in my book series, in, in my book, and it became this huge fandom that everybody loved and cherished together. Um, but around the fourth book, Elias shut Nix out of creating the stories, and she didn't know why. And before they could reconcile any hurt feelings, he passed away, leaving her the final manuscript of the final book, The Searching Soul, without so much as an I'm sorry wedged between the pages, which she wouldn't even know if she opened it because she refused to. She would rather have let it rot. Nick's had a lot of pent up emotions. She felt like um, her best friend, her, con her confidant, the person that she created a world with, completely disregarded her and her place in it, and she felt exiled. So 
of course, she didn't want anything to do with it anymore. She cut herself out from a lot of friends besides her best friend, Basil. Um, but what she didn't know was that Elias was protecting her. As it turns out, because of the love of Thavma, it started to seep through the cracks of reality, little by little, bit by bit. So Elias thought by shutting Nyx out of the stories, he would be able to save her because Thavma was coming for him to finish the story. Little did he realize that she was going to accidentally smash his urn and release his ashes, therefore the magic within his, uh, within his um, stardust, because we all come from the stars, all of the elements um, that are found in our bodies are found in the universe, uh, unleashed Thavma with it, tearing a hole in space-time. Therefore, the, creative, uh, the, cre the world created by Nyx and her grandfather with all of the plants, animals, creatures, including uh, sky, sky beasts such as manta rays and whales and little amphibians that steal your bagels, and also characters and monsters such as Neb, the second in command, to the evil space captain, Captain Heath. So not only that, but now Nyx has to figure out how to find the connections and the ending of the story of the seventh book, because at the end of the sixth book, a rot was unleashed on the world of Thavma, and so it came through with it. So Nyx has to mend connections with her friends, including her best friend Basil and his struggles, and also find ties to the ends of her story and reunite with that world that she was once so connected to in order to save the world. And finally find an ending to the searching soul. Stories, in, in my basic honest opinion, are one of the most basic human necessities aside from food and sleep. They, I feel like we, we, we not only learn as ourselves internally, but also externally and communicate and connect with others. So whether you're falling down the rabbit hole, running into the wall of nine and three-fourths, Hufflepuff's rule, by the way, or taking the second star to the right and straight on till morning, know that it's, um, it's OK to be lost in stories, because that's what brings us all together. I mean, most of us wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't have met so many wonderful, amazing people without being lovers of stories. And I cannot wait to continue my journey to becoming a master storyteller and creating galaxies for people to get lost in, because that's all I want to do. Thank you. Questions? Uh, why did you choose to write an illustrated novel? So the main I idea that I had be behind writing an illustrated novel was the fact that the illustrations were taking over the images and the images were taking over the illustrations on most of my pages, including the curse, the rot, in the ending pages as you go through it. So I thought that that would be the best way to describe this story and to create this story. Um, and uh, I felt like it was the best way to tell Nick's story at this point. Yes, Ben? Uh, working with Betsy, um, when she agreed to be my mentor, I almost broke down crying in a family, uh, a family store. So it was fine to cry there, but at the same time, it was just great. Um, but for having, uh, it, was a, it wasn't really hard because she had a lot of the same experiences I did. I know a lot of people say, don't meet your heroes, but I'm really, really happy I was able to connect with Betsy in this way because we spoke almost every single week during my, um, my entire process and she actually went, into un she went from undergrad to graduate school right away, so we had a lot of connections there. And uh, her, um, her first um, manuscript that she created, Tides, was also uh, her first book. Um, that I found that I found in Barnes and Noble, and it was it was like it was um, it was a really amazing experience because not only did I get to learn from her experiences, but she helped me grow as a person as well. Just having that, and also she, like it was really just amazing, like skyping with somebody from all across the ocean like every week. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Pilar. I don't know. I just didn't want this to go by without just saying wow. Like it's. 
because your colors are so vibrant and I've seen you working on this and wow. And I'm just coming from a visual standpoint because I haven't read your story yet, which I will taste at. But what it puts, what's your medium? Did you work visually? Or? I worked, um, well, first I did a lot of thumbnail sketches in my um, rough. So I did a lot of pencil sketches and put a layout for Betsy and my professors to see. And uh, they gave me feedback and then I started working digitally. And then from there, I just kept working digitally. And I was so thankful for going that route because with each mock-up I made and each redo I did, I, I made, I, I did three different layouts and I added more illustrations as I went uh, given the critique I was given. And being able to see myself grow in my style, and I used my iPad at that point because it was wonderful. Procreate is a magical, magical thing. And uh, being able to see myself grow that way, it was really amazing. <laughs> Thank you.